Hi, my name is Sanjeev. I work for Qualcomm Research. Uh, I work on product management and we're demonstrating LTE and unlicensed spectrum. Uh, sure. All right. So what we're seeing in the industry is uh, a, a rapid increase in the amount of data demand. And uh, we're claiming that there's a thousand X increase over a period of maybe 10 or so, 10 or so years. Um, and of course, we're increasing the uh, efficiency of the technology to meet this demand. But in addition, we're looking at using different types of spectrum to address 1000X. So traditional license spectrum as operators use today, but also trying to extend that to use unlicensed spectrum and uh, enhance the spectrum assets they have uh, at their disposal. We're using a basic framework of carry aggregation where we take multiple channels of LTE uh, and bond them together to give a better user experience in terms of system capacity as well as user throughput. And traditional carrier aggregation bonds together multiple channels that happen to be both licensed, both or multiple channels that are licensed. With LTE and unlicensed, we're extending that same framework to take the second or, or subsequent carriers to be in unlicensed spectrum, in this case, five gigahertz. And what that gives us is better network performance, better user experience. The operator has one unified LTE network. And we're going to show that we can coexist with Wi-Fi, which is already using five gigahertz today. Um, LTU is ideal for small cells, 5 gigahertz having low coverage. Uh, small cells are perfectly suited uh, for, for that application, and then operators have a single network with which you can accumulate other small cells. What we wanted to show was that uh, LTE and unlicensed can coexist with Wi Fi, and we wanted to create a very stressful environment uh, for LTE to prove itself. So what we did is uh, we set up a, a small room with uh, eight pairs of access points and Wi-Fi stations, um, all situated in, uh, in the screen room, uh, all occupying the same channel so that they're all interfering with one another. And then in the baseline case, we add a ninth set of equipment, uh, in this case, a pair of Wi-Fi access point and terminals. And we wanted to gauge what the traffic looks like, what average throughput we see for Wi-Fi when we're pumping uh, like FTP-like traffic to all these access points. Having that baseline established, then we said, let's switch out that ninth equipment under test from Wi-Fi to LTE in unlicensed, and let's see what the behavior is of LTU, and then also see what that does to the other Wi-Fi access points and stations that are that have already there. What we find is, um, in this graph, we have in this graph, we show the average Wi-Fi throughput for each of the eight uh, Wi-Fi wi access point stations we showed. Uh, the blue color bar is when all the uh, nine pairs were Wi-Fi. Uh, the bar adjacent to it is when we switched out that last ninth pair from Wi-Fi to LTEU. Looking, so this two, these two bars show the ninth pairs. The blue bar is when that ninth pair is Wi-Fi and we saw an average Wi-Fi wi throughput of about 3.3 megabits per second. When we switch that ninth pair out from Wi-Fi to LTU, we see that there's a tremendous uh, increase, a factor of two, going from 3.3 to 6.7. So this illustrates the point that LTU outperforms Wi-Fi. But then the question is, what did it do to Wi-Fi? And if you look at each of these uh, pairs, which represent the other eight uh, Wi-Fi station access point pairs, we see at least a maintenance, if not an improvement, in the Wi-Fi throughput, uh, with a few exceptions. There's some cases where the Wi-Fi throughput dropped slightly, but overall there's a maintenance or an improvement. We wanted to look at this situation a little more closely, so we set up another um, experiment, and we, see, we wanted to show that LTU is a better neighbor to Wi-Fi than Wi-Fi itself. So what we did is we took a similar setup of the eight pairs of Wi-Fi access points and stations, and we progressively changed out uh, the access point, the Wi-Fi, with LTU, two at a time in this case. So we went to two, uh, six Wi-Fi plus two, and then four Wi-Fi plus four. And what we see here is looking purely at the Wi-Fi throughput, not at the LTU throughput, which we saw was higher, uh, when we had the baseline of everything being Wi-Fi, we saw an average throughput of five megabits per second. When you swapped out two Wi-Fi for two LTU, we saw the LTE throughput go up to 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 5.
and we swapped out two more, we saw the throughput going up to 6.9. So what we're seeing is for the same number of, of access points, uh, LTU is acting as a better neighbor to Wi-Fi than Wi-Fi itself. We also ran a third experiment where we wanted to sh show that streaming over Wi-Fi worked when LTU was running. And so we ran YouTube to eight devices on Wi-Fi. When we had this coexistence mechanism turned on, everything worked fine. When we turned off this LTU coexistence mechanism, the Wi-Fi streaming went to hell. So we really need, we need, really need coexistence, and we wanted to show that the coexistence mechanism is robust and actually improves uh, Wi-Fi performance.